bit, still getting some people on the stage. If you sign up as a speaker, give me a request, as Adam just did. Granted. Um, also, Culture Block, I think you got a couple of requests. Let, let us know if you have problems signing up or coming on stage. Same goes for uh, Perry from D News. But you are, oh, Perry is on stage, Culture Block on stage, works like a charm. Love it. Fill those spaces. Awesome. So um, uh, before we start the recording, I would like to do a quick uh, mic check with everyone, um, starting with uh, 8-Bit Arcade. Uh, can you hear me? Hello. Yes. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like you're on the racetrack. <laughs> can I get this once again, please? 8-Bit Arcade, are you still there? I'm still there, sorry, I'm just driving. I'm about to pull over so we can talk. Okay, okay. Well, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Uh, culture block, how about you? Testing, testing. Okay. Seems okay to me. Sounds good, loud and clear. Happy to have you. Uh, next up in line. Great to be here, thanks. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Adam, what's up? Hey, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Very good. Next up would be Jun Dam. Can you hear us? I think I heard him before. Well, I heard him before. I'm not sure. Maybe he's away from the phone for a bit. There he goes. Unmute. Uh, yeah, we heard you, uh, Adam. I think, um, I guess the, the host. I'm gone. Or I'm waiting for the host here. Can you guys still hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Great. Okay. Thanks. Good. Okay. Next up in line would be Perry. Perry, can you hear us? Can we hear you? Dnews.zone. Checking in. <laughs> awesome. Sauce. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Last speaker for today. I think we have one more speaker not showing up yet. It would be uh, Sikh from EOS India. Can yep. you hear us? Hello. Yeah, I can hear you. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Um, next thing that we do is like checking with uh, the co-host.gems if we are ready to go live on YouTube and all the other platforms where we're streaming to. That's good. We're ju just missing one speaker for today. Uh, that goes to, to you, Jana, or .gems. Uh, we are missing Harry from PBox Privacy. Um, so, yeah, once he's coming into the space, please make sure that he's becoming a speaker. And um, yeah, I think we're, we're ready to go live. So uh, that's good. I give you guys, I give myself a countdown, give us <laughs> Jana a countdown to start the stream. That would be five, four, three, two, one. And we're live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Pomelo season six, pitch sessions number two. Thanks for joining everyone here on Twitter Spaces live for the Pumelo Pitch Session. Um, and also, welcome everyone on Facebook pages of EOS Blockchain, Pumelo.io, and the Jobs, uh, dot gems, uh, as well as on the Pumelo Grants YouTube channel. I am Martin Brewer of the Pumelo team, and I'm happy to be your host today for the Pitch Sessions. And it's going to be a loaded one. Uh, I'll be sharing the stage with seven amazing Web3 builders, all of them highly motivated to introduce the public goods that they're building for the ecosystem. Also, Pomelo is going multi-chain, so we're not just seeing projects building on EOS getting funding. No, we're also happy, very happy, to see the Telos community, another antelope-based blockchain, joining us. And today's pitch session will be 50% Telos project and 50% EOS project. That's an applause. Where's my sound effect? For now, super happy to have the Telos community here with us and uh, also see some other EOS projects starting to build on Telos. We'll hear more about this uh, later on. So let's take a look at the projects we have in line for you today. Uh, starting off with uh, Perry from Dinus Zone. He's applying for everything EOS pool and the Telos pool. Um, then we have the Antelope Chronicles by the Culture Block team uh, moving over from the Telos community to EOS, applying for the Everything EOS pool. Uh, then we have EOS India, Sik, um, of course, uh, EOS India, applying for the Everything EOS pool. 
Then we have the Open Block Exp uh, Explorer, OBE, uh, um, a project by Detroit Ledger Technologies and uh, will be presented by Adam. Uh, they're applying for the Teller School. Interesting. And uh, then we have 8-Bit Arcade, presented by Russell Bryant, another Telos project. Um, last but not least, we have the only project that's applying this, uh, for this pitch session, um, the Smart Wallet EVM, presented by Jun. And I hope one more project will be joining us shortly, which is the P-Box Privacy. Uh, Harry, if you hear us, <laughs> uh, join us on Twitter Spaces. Uh, otherwise, next week you can um, join the next pitch session, I would say. So before we get started, I give everybody a quick rundown of the rules. Each grant owner will have about five minutes to explain their grant to us. If there's time left over after the pitch, I may ask some questions to the owner, but also other people on the panel, other people on stage can ask questions. If you're in the audience, you can raise your hand and uh, we might bring you up on stage to ask a question but five minutes are tight. So um, it's, you know, it's gonna be tricky. Uh, big shout out to Jana helping us in the background, producing the show, and she will be sharing some tweets of the grand creators on top of the, this uh, to the space. So you can click on it and get a direct link to the grant so we can make your don donations when uh, the presenters uh, did the convincing pitch and you want to send a little bit of uh, EOS or Telos their way. Um, so yeah. Uh, since we have so many speakers lined up here and we want to keep this under 60 minutes, I, I'll skip the part where, where I introduce you to all the concepts of Pomelo, quadratic funding, public goods. However, check out um, the first tweet that's sh shared right now, uh, the Pomelo Season Handbook, uh, where all of the information, a lot of background introduction, tips and tricks for Pomelo um, linked in one Pomelo Handbook. Um, yeah, and last thing before we get into the pitches, very last thing. Um, I want to share some stats. So the total matching pool this season is uh, $182,000. Um, and we have so far um, 134 uh, grants uh, application. Uh, 97 were approved so far. We have 22 still pending and uh, 15 where an action is required. So if you're not approved yet and um, you know, our grant owner, then check your emails. You might need to do some action. Uh, we're doing the best to get the pending ones into uh, the approved state as soon as possible. We have a total raised value currently half time uh, just by uh, the donors uh, at $4,816. And we have 256 unique contributors already. So shout out to each and every one of them. All right, enough of me for now. Um, I'm excited to hear about our first speaker for today, and um, let's get into the order that I presented earlier. Um, I think the first one would be Perry from D News. Perry, are you ready to pitch? I am ready, Martin. All right, I love it. So, um, Perry, your go time starts uh, now. Let's go. Okay. Okay, very good. Thank you, Martin. Here we go. Most of you here in, in this Twitter space are probably familiar with DNews. You know it's a website where I aggregate videos, articles, and podcasts from different platforms, including YouTube, Medium, and Spotify, where you can browse and search the news and events presented as a cross-platform cross-media web app specifically tuned to our EOSIO Antelope Fractally community. What you probably didn't know, because I just release it, released it, is that now your experience is totally customizable by each community member. That's you. You can, you can search and browse and do everything you used to do, except now you can choose exactly the feeds to show in your reader. You can focus on just the feeds that are relevant to your work or include every feed or anything in between. It's completely up to you. You can also reorder your feeds however you like. You can bookmark posts for later reference. Because DNews is a web app, your feeds and bookmarks are available on any device. Just sign up and log in to get started. Super easy. So that's the elevator pitch on the new customizable My DNews features. I hope you try it and like it. 
There's really nothing like it in or out of our community. And most importantly, it's made with love and respect for the time of every member. That's you. Next, I'd like to step back a bit and share my vision of DNews and how important design attributes that make it a valuable tool for the community and why I'm asking for your support here and now. Important design attribute number one. DNews does not show the typical sponsored ads. Instead, the user-optimized interface shows limited ads, and the ones it does show are, com are community show our community public service announcements and ads to, to meetings and events where things are actually being built and people are having fun. Important design attribute number two, DNews feeds are algo free, direct from the source, unlike your typical big tech social media platform feeds, which determines which hosts you see in your feed and in what order. DNews gives you the pure, unfiltered feed just as each source has posted them. You get your news aggregated, yet in unprocessed, organic form. What's, that's very different than a news feed that is micro-targeting you. In other words, a feed that is serving up a feed based on your personal data points, including your browsing history and extracted preferences. Important design attribute number three, DNews enriches your, your news experience. Actually, it's fun. See how quickly you can get around viewing all the fr great fresh content the community is producing. Because we all know knowledge is power, it's exhilarating and time-saving and addicting at the same time. As I mentioned before, DNews is now totally customizable, allowing you to save your customized bookmarks and feeds. While DNews comes by default loaded with all the community feeds that you can customize, DNews also includes other sources of news source of news sources that you can choose to activate or not, including news from the greater crypto environment and general news as well. So you can quickly get the big picture of the day all within the same web app on any device. I'll be adding new sources all the time and welcome any suggestions to make that experience fuller and richer. Important design attribute number four, DNews does not micro-target you, which means it serves the exact same feed to all users. Everyone has the same picture of the community. This helps a community by reducing friction as a well-educated community may more easily reach consensus. A community being micro-targeted, on the other hand, where everyone may see a different picture of the same community is subject to manipulation and divide. DNews fixes that. DNews keeps our community whole with an unprocessed, aggregated stream of up-to-the-moment news and events. While I understand the need to, to target advertising to attract new members of the community, there has to be a place where people can go to get the clearest and most comprehensive picture. That's why I built DNews and why I'm asking for your support to make it the best experience for newbies just trying to get their bearings as well as OGs trying to keep up with the wide range and fast moving subjects that make up our community. Please visit getting started menu item to begin customizing your DNews and watch video demos of how to use, how to use and sign up for the D free plan provided to our community as a public service. Go to Pomelo, go to pomelo.io and type the DNews into the search to find both of my grants and pick up your favorite pool to contribute. DNews.zone. Thank you so much for your attention. That's it. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> classic. <laughs> classic on mute, man. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> Thanks so much, Perry. Uh, that was pretty amazing. Uh, just on time for two pools, right? So um, uh, my question would be, where do I sign up? If I have a project and I want to be aggregated, um, what's the process here? Just get in touch with you or uh, what's the way? You can, there's a, there's a few ways to do it. You could certainly just Drop me a note in Telegram. Uh, that's one way. And, and that is on the contact page there. Uh, and then there's also a form 
uh, to suggest a lake, either one is fine. You could just, you know, just sending me directly is, is totally fine. I'm happy to do that. Uh, that uh, I, I will also mention that, that I have been uh, attempting to persuade different governance uh, groups within our community, basically different fractal groups, to take on the responsibility of editor, of deciding which, which uh, sources become part of DNews or not. So if it sounds centralized, you know, just send it to Perry. Well, that's my response, is I'm actually trying to offload that responsibility of the decision. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely love it, love it. Uh, so yeah, uh, great way of uh, starting this uh, pitch session. Thanks so much. Very well. Uh, and uh, wish you success. Thank you, Martin. Awesome. Uh, so moving to the next speaker, we got the Culture Block team. Are you guys ready? Yep, good to go here. Uh, perfect. All right. Then let me uh, start the timer. It's three, two, one, go time. All right. Thank you, Martin. Also, thanks, Perry. That was a great pitch. Um, my name is Evan. I'm here on behalf of uh, Culture Block. Um, I'll get into that a little bit later. We're uh, a block producer on Telos, and we've got a couple of grants on Pomelo um, in both the EOS and Telos uh, sections. Uh, I'm here mainly to speak about um, the Antelope Chronicle. So uh, Culture Block is an, an initiative actively working to grow awareness for the Antelope ecosystem while fostering healthy online communities in EOS, Telos, UX, and WAX networks. Our grant this season is the Antelope Chronicle, a biannual zine highlighting culture, lore, and community news. We offer short content that community members can read online, share with friends, or print off to hand out at events, or you know, leave on a table at an event. Um, we're providing high-level news, so kind of an overview of what's happening in EOS alongside news from Antelope, uh, we aim to keep all stakeholders, contributors, and community members aligned and informed, similar to what Perry was saying. Uh, the, the funds from previous se uh, seasons have allowed us to create our first issue, uh, generate educational content on how community members can make their own zines, and we built out a landing page for the project. Over the next quarter, we're going to focus on marketing the project to the EOS community as well as uh, uh, WAX and uh, UX. We already have kind of a footprint in Telos, but of course we'll continue to push there. Um, we're also going to use the funds from this grant to begin collaborative initiatives with NFT artists from across Antelope to produce artwork for upcoming issues and uh, to support um, additional EOS content for the second chronicle, for example, from the EOS grant. So, uh, you might see in future issues that some of the uh, uh, Telos and EOS, for example, since we're getting funding from both of them, we might feature them a little more heavily. Um, but we'll see. For now, it's all pretty much even uh, across the board. Um, so, yeah, now that we've laid the foundational uh, groundwork, our goal is to begin publishing this on a biannual cadence. Um and yeah, so with if I have some time remaining, I'll just talk about what Culture Block is. Uh, we just rebranded from uh, Telos Culture. Our main goal is to just, as is in the name, kind of uh, nurture the culture around our ecosystems and um, provide digital content, whether it be educational videos, uh, articles, social content, uh, basically just news about the antelope ecosystem overall and uh yeah we've been doing this for a couple of years we have a grant for uh culture block as well so if you want to support what we're doing there uh we would love it um yeah thank you all so much for listening i i'm happy to take questions now oopsie wrong sound effect i was supposed to be wait that one <laughs> nice <laughs> awesome um yeah thanks for the pitch are there any questions in the audience so far i see somebody requested speaker from from uh the audience or anybody on the panel wants to wants to address a question to um evan and the culture block team 
No. Okay. It's okay if not. You guys can uh, <laughs> you guys can check out our socials. There is actually one one thing I will mention uh, really really quickly. Uh, we run a similar thing to this. We're we're trying to get it off the ground. It's called uh, uh, the Public Goods Picnic. So if anyone wants to come talk about public goods with us, uh, we would love to have you there. Um, and I think our the date for that is going to be Tuesday, the twenty seventh of June. The next one. Thank you. Yes, and uh, I can vouch for this. Uh, we had the first uh, public goods picnic. Awesome branding, by the way. I love the, the sound of this uh, on on Tuesday. And uh, I was there, like Andrew from, from the Pomelo team and Daniel Key, CEO of Pomelo, was there. And it was a really nice chat. So thank you for hosting this. And uh, yeah, kudos to, to Culture Block. Um, I think what you're doing, you're firing on all cylinders. Um, on all fronts, and I like the collabor uh, collaborative spirit. Um, for the public goods picnic, you're addressing all builders of public goods, right? Or is it? Yeah, it doesn't have to be antelope. It it can be any public good. Uh, it can be just open source software. It can be, uh, you know, we don't really want to necessarily get political, but if we if it gets political, so be it. I mean, we can talk about you know public goods and how they affect people in the world overall, not just in Web3. So, you know, feel free to show up and, and bring your ideas along. It's it's really open-minded and really, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go where, wherever we go. So, uh, yeah, if you have pitches you want to make or, or just you want to learn something, we'd, we'd love to have you there. Uh, and thank you, Martin, for, for coming and the whole Pomelo team. It was so great to have you guys there. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you pass it off to the next speaker. Thank you so much, guys. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, cool. So who we have next in line, uh, that would be uh, EOS India. Sick, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready, sir. Perfect. Yeah. So three, two, one, let's go. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, I do thank you to the Pamela crowdfunding platform for the invitation to pitch my grant EOS India for the second term. Uh, I also uh, performed in the, the last season so uh, myself is Daniel Singh, and I am uh, working as a freelancer on Twitter and the handle name as eos 7 Lotto. and also uh, started EOS India 23 after my familial grant was Pomelo grant was approved. And uh, this time uh, I have also a new uh, member. Uh, he's a uh, young Gun Young, uh, who is a research research professor in designing, and uh, who has helped me this time to design EOS India logo and some other templates uh, that I am posting uh, on my um, uh, mass media uh, platforms. So uh, why I, I open EOS, EOS India? So, because I am very much fond of use blockchain and it's a broad use cases in the future and hope dreams will come true of all use community members. Whoever is building their projects based on use EVM, GameFi or other developing tools for the betterment of use blockchain. So, uh, Pomelo season five was a baby step for me uh, to introduce my grant on the name of EOS India. Because uh, I, I started following uh, EOS blockchain five years ago with zero knowledge. And uh, it was a new technology for me. And then I studied uh, from the EOS IO that was run by the block one about account opening, staking, voting, smart contract writing, and so on. And finally, <laughs> I am today here to pitch my grant. So the reason I started my grant in Hindi Twitter channel was because I felt that there are US communities in English, Korean, Chinese, Vietnamese, Mexican language speakers, but there is no community that speaks Hindi language or any other language like Punjabi, that is my mother tongue. So even though there are English speakers in India, but still there are language barriers to let people understand about blockchain, especially EOS and its features. So after three months of regular posting on Twitter, I thought to expand the communication tools. So in terms of uh, communication tools, uh, I can say that I have searched some countries uh, because every country has specific mass media tools used for communication. For example, in US, Facebook, Insta, and YouTube, number one, two, three. In Europe, Facebook, YouTube, and WhatsApp is common. And in Asian countries, uh, in case of Korea, uh, the Kakao talk is the dominant one and the Japanese they use line 
Chinese, they use Weibo, WeChat, TikTok. But in India, when I search uh, more than Twitter, the Instagram is growing very fast. And the, the second is the Facebook when you are posting your uh, your social uh, activities. So for the communication, the WhatsApp is the most popular app. So that's why I, I have started just two weeks ago uh, I, uh, the, to, to bring the EOS related contents uh, on these apps and I have started it on the Instagram. And I have started to post live episode videos on Insta, both in Hindi and uh, Punjabi language. That is my mother tongue separately. So, and I, I was quite happy that people are people are joining me, and uh, and they, they they are asking about it. It and I received a message from one of the Genesis holder of Fios token, who who is uh, the five years old uh, Genesis holder of Fios token, uh, and he he asked me to post the video on YouTube as well. So I was very quite happy. So uh, I think uh, I will do it in the future. Uh, but uh, as you guys know, it's a time consuming, but uh, because it, it, it has become my hobby and my passion toward use blockchain. So it could be my part-time part, part -time job also. So if you guys can support my single use donation to my grant, and uh, who knows if in the future, I will switch to the full-time job. So at last, uh, thank you for inviting me to this session, and uh, uh, I, I will appreciate if you guys can follow my activities on Twitter handle EOS India 23, Instagram EOS underscore India underscore 23, and on Facebook is EOS India. Thank you so much for your inv invitation. Great job, thank you, Daniel. Sorry, I was calling you out by your uh, last name. No, it's <laughs> so... okay. You can call me Daniel. You can call me Singh. Is okay for me. <laughs> okay, uh, great stuff, and I love it to see um, the US community grow uh, into the Hindi language. And uh, congrats on getting some traction on uh, Instagram. It seems to be like your main channel at the moment because Instagram is popular in India. Yeah. Uh, that's what I hear. So uh, after the pitch, I make sure to follow um, that Instagram account and give you some likes. And uh, maybe everybody else in the audience can do the same thing to give you a little bit of a push. <laughs> no, thank you so much for your grant spot. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, one last question. Last last week, you you made some uh, connection to the US Synergy team, another uh, team that that's working on different language group. Uh, has this collaboration substantiated already? Can we see some, uh, is, is there collaboration going on between you guys? No, no, I didn't receive any, any, any call. Yeah. Okay, we'll push on the, on our side to get some more synergy going. Yeah, <laughs> if they can uh, ask me, then uh, maybe I will try. But uh, uh, <laughs> honestly, I am very much packed because I have to uh, create the contents both in the Hindi language and in Punjabi language every day to post it on the Instagram. So uh, I'm not sure I am I am I have spare time for that, uh, but uh, I will try. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Sounds good. Yep. Um, you. So I wish you luck, and uh, we'll include your your grant like everybody else's grant in the Pumelo Pitch Sessions collection on Pumelos and send some donations your way. Yeah, I thank appreciate you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much. All right, moving on. Uh, next up in line, we have Adam from uh, uh, Detroit Ledger Technologies, and he's going to tell us about the Open Block Explorer. Adam, are you there? Yep, I'm there. I'm ready. Thanks so, for having me. Very excited to hear about this. Um, three, two, one, let's go. Yeah, so uh, Adam Zintarski from Detroit Ledger Technologies here to represent Open Block Explorer. Uh, we were formerly called EOS Detroit, so we've been around uh, the EOS ecosystem since pre-launch, uh, run block producers on Telos, uh, FIO, um, Wax, and another uh, a number of other uh, Antelope-based chains. Um, OBE, Open Block Explorer, I mean, I don't have to really go in too much to what a Block Explorer is. 
Um, we know in the antelope ecosystem, um, most people have traditionally relied on blocks.io um, as their, their primary block explorer. Uh, there's a few others, but um, as we've seen over the last, I would say, probably year to two years, um, Blocks.io has progressively become unmaintained um, and it's closed source. So um, Open Block Explorer was actually started by the Telos core development team. Um, we've been helping them out for the last year and a half or so um, on various projects, and this is, uh, this is one of them. Um, uh, during Eden on EOS in previous Pomelo seasons, we tried to raise some money and we were somewhat successful. Um, we used that money to actually uh, make Open Block Explorer, which was previously only for Telos. Uh, we, we did the work to actually make it multi-chain and configurable. Um, the really cool thing uh, that's coming up the pipeline as well, too, is that um, we're going to be launching this uh, multi-chain version of Open Block Explorer at uh, explore.antelope.io um, and we received kind of the approval from uh, you know Eve and, and uh, Jesse and the, the various uh, representatives at the Antelope meeting to do that so uh, we're just working on cleaning up a couple last things to make the experience more smooth uh, for multi-chain uh, making it similar to like how Blox is and adding some of those nice to have features like autocomplete uh, but we will be uh, launching that soon. So I just wanted to say thanks for the the previous support and thanks for the support from from Eden on EOS uh, because I know there's a few uh, members in here as well too. Um, you know, outside of that, we want support for this project because there's a number of different features that we need to add to reach parity with the old version of Blocks, or I guess the the working version of Blocks. Um, you know, I have a whole list in the Pomelo grant. Um, but also, you know, it's it, as the ecosystems evolve, we've also had things like IBC uh, come online and none of the other block, uh, block explorers are really um, accounting for that or trying to uh, make that information easy to see. Um, so we have things like that that we want to add. We want to add uh, language localization um, because most of the block explorers that are online right now um, either just have English or, or maybe English and, and Chinese. Um, so we want to add more languages to make it more accessible. And then um, finally, I, you know, where I see this going um, in the long term is I actually see a DAO like Eden on EOS uh, managing uh, some of the development of this platform, especially as it, as it relates to uh, multi-chain specifically. And, and also um, building in things like banner ad modules, like sponsored banner ads and, um, you know, other advertising options, and um, maybe there's an opportunity to work with Perry to to have his uh, newsfeed aggregated uh, aggregator implemented into like the homepage of each explorer or something like that. So um, we really kind of see it becoming a hub and something that's uh, decentralized and, and more self sufficient um, through the uh, management of of a DAO. Um, and it makes sense because this is open source and should be maintained by the community so that we don't run into the issues that we are now with, um, you know, our, our current block explorers not really being in, in great shape. And uh, that's pretty much my pitch. Um, I can take any questions if anybody has any. Uh, yeah, awesome. Um... Congrats. I, I didn't know that I'm missing a block producer, but I do now that I hear it. I remember the times when blocks was running smooth and it didn't get any ads. Um, and uh, it would really weave the community together, I feel like. Having an easy block explorer to browse Wax and, and Telos and all these other chains, um, absolutely necessary. This is great. Um, any questions from the audience here? I mean, you, you addressed Perry right there. Um, maybe he has a question. Um, it's open for now. Anyone wants to jump in here? Well, it's a, uh, I appreciate the invitation and I'd love to talk to you, Adam. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. We'll, we will, we will talk to each other hopefully, uh, soon. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Um, we'll, we'll chat in the, the Eden working groups, I'm sure. <laughs> Pretty cool. I, I have a question, actually. I wondered how, uh, uh, you mentioned uh, accounting for Antelope, IBC, and I wondered what like a, a cross-chain 
uh, block explorer might look like uh, and how that might be different from just a, a single chain, if you have time to address that. Yeah, so I mean, I think generally when we're thinking about IBC right now is um, within the transaction history, we want to one, make it uh, more apparent what transactions are IBC transactions. Um, and then also making it easy to um, switch between both sides of that that um, transaction, right? Whether it's you know the EO side of it or the Telos side of it, and and seeing and and being able to easily um, from a user experience perspective switch between those two and making it apparent that's what it is. Um, also giving people the ability to actually swap tokens from the uh, explorer because I believe right now the only real good way to do it is I, I think UX network has like a demo app that they have for that, but um, we just want to make it more accessible. For sure. Less barriers, the better. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks so much. Uh, I love it that the, some conversation is going here live on stage. That's great. So uh, let's keep it going. Thanks, Adam. Uh, wish you luck. And um, uh, yeah, also happy to hear that you got the green light from from the uh, coalition. That's pretty cool. All right. Um, moving on. Uh, next up, we have Russell Bryan from 8-Bit Arcade. Are you there? Yes, Martin. Thank you for having me. Perfect. Uh, I'm not you're... driving anymore, so I can talk safely. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, and you're a first-time Pomelo user, right? Yeah, yes, I am. I I've, uh, was oh. made aware of it by, well, EOS and Telos, actually. So. All right. So uh, your time starts in three, two, one. Let's go. Thank you, and hello. I'll give you my pitch. I've got it down to three and a half minutes, so we'll have about only a minute and a half, hopefully, with some questions afterwards. Hey there, game enthusiasts. Get ready to embark on an unforgettable gaming adventure with 8-Bit Arcade. I'm Russell Bryant, the founder, and uh, this startup alongside me is a team of passionate gamers. We're here to revolutionize the gaming scene and bring power back to the players like you. At 8-Bit Arcade, we believe that the community is the heart and soul of gaming. That's why we've built a one-of-a-kind platform that puts you in the driver's seat. We value your input and ideas, so we created a cool decentralized setup powered by our token Nibble. As part of our vibrant and inclusive ecosystem, we have a say in shaping our journey. Your voice matters, and we're excited to reward you for your commitment. That can be done in the form of rewards uh, from company profits. Transparency and trust are paramount to us. That's why I, as a founder, have completed a KYC verification process, a quite stringent one at that. And 8-Bit Arcade is a registered company in the United States, in the state of Delaware, precisely. Uh, your privacy is very important to us, so we secure it with encryption at uh, point of entry. Uh, I would like to sort of dive a little bit more. We're all about indie games, and uh, we consider ourselves to be an indie game paradise that seamlessly blends the Web 2 and Web 3 worlds. So look no further. 8-Bit Arcade, we carefully curate mind-blowing indie games and licensed titles, too, that will take your gaming experience to new heights. Whether you're a casual player or a hardcore enthusiast, there'll be something there for everyone. Uh, but hold on, here's the best part. We've made blockchain gaming a breeze. No tech wizardry required. Our platform simplifies the experience so you can immerse yourself in captivating games hassle-free. Worried about blockchain complexities? Well, don't be. Uh, we accept traditional payment methods too because we believe in keeping things easy for you. And if you're curious about the power of blockchain, we've made it a breeze to get involved. With as few clicks and as effortlessly as possible, you can convert your fiat currency to Telos tokens and seamlessly integrate with Web3 ecosystem. Cross-chain bridging? Ha! Not a problem. Yep, we've got that covered too. It's as easy as a couple of clicks or a couple of taps on your screen, opening up a world of possibilities for every gamer. Oh, and I'm not finished yet. And I didn't mention we have an, an amazing mobile app in development. It's the perfect gaming companion, which will be available for download on iOS and Play Store eventually. Experience gaming on the go with a free-to-play version that lets you dive right into the action without spending a dime. For those seeking even more features and customization options, our subscription version will be available from our platform and will unlock certain perks. One of the coolest features, and I love this bit, is our novel highlight reel functionality. 
You capture your best moments in the game and you can share that world uh, with the world on your social media accounts. So let your gaming prowess shine, as they say. And if that wasn't enough, there's a little bit more still. Get ready. The heart pounding gaming tournaments that take your adrenaline levels through to new roofs. We've partnered with incredible organizations like Dubs to bring your thrilling competition showcasing your skills and giving you a chance to discover extraordinary new talents. The, uh, the spirit of competition has never been more alive. So we, as a platform, have multiple revenue streams. Subscription being the one and the first one that we'll be implementing. Advertising, uh, which I can go into more detail with questions afterwards. Fundraising fees, partner fees, and we'll have an online store due next year. That will be to sell hardware or gaming hardware. Uh, transaction fees uh, that come through our platform as well. 8-Bit Arcade is set to make waves in the gaming industry. We're proud uh, pride ourselves to, on collaborations with top notch partners like ApeSwap and, ApeSwap and Swapsicle Decentralized Exchanges, Telos Blockchain, the DAP Play Store, and further uh, partnerships to be announced yet. Uh, if you'd like to join us on this epic gaming journey uh, where indie games rule, community is everything, and possibilities are endless, yeah, just tap me up or connect with us on Twitter and follow our announcements. Uh, we're due to launch our platform later this year in september or towards the end of the year so yeah watch this space we're really excited and it's a f um, thriving community and burgeoning sector to be in so that's me and my pitch done and i'm open to questions all right good stuff i love it uh, good. any questions here on stage yeah um, i have question Let's go. Uh, what's the reason to use Talos rather than use blockchain to for this uh, for this new game app? Okay, so they were one of the first blockchains to approach us. Uh, we partnered with them. They partly gave us some liquidity for our token, which was great at the time. They're also EVM compatible. So in order for us to basically be cover as many chains as possible, it was a great starting point for us. Now, having said that, we won't stop at Telos. We fully anticipate EOS to be available on our platform and other chains as well that aren't necessarily EVM compatible. But it's a good starting point for us. I hope that answers your question. So is it a kind of a dApp? Sorry, say that again? Is it a kind of dApp? No, it's not a DAP. You're straight straight off the platform, and you can the, all the games are hosted on our platform, and they will also have the mobile app where some of the games will be available on there too, and uh, the subscription version you'll be able to download them. So yeah, that, uh, going back to your original question, Telos is the gas fees were extremely low, extremely fast transaction speeds, and it's extremely scalable as well. So it was the perfect fit for us to start with. So it's me. It's not. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not available on uh, uh, on, uh, on iOS or the android right no not yet so we're still working on the app that will be launched later in the year probably towards the end of the year we need to concentrate on the web-based platform first and once that's um finalized and launched then we'll concentrate on getting the mobile apps out there okay thank you sounds good thanks for asking the questions and uh, thanks for the answers and yeah i'm excited uh you know i agree with you that uh, onboarding lots of users through gaming is uh really good strategy here um yep. one question that i had quick before we move to the next speaker would be like um could you give us a hint about how many games you already have in the pipeline to be launching with you so currently at the moment we have three games testing on our platform we've got a few more that we're in discussions with and to be honest every week we've got more and more people approaching us and we're approaching uh indie games as well we're looking, by the time we launch our platform, to have a collection of licensed games from reputable brands as well on our platform. But that will all happen in own time. So we've just got a handful of games at the moment, but we're growing on a weekly basis. That's great. And all of these games are supposed to be 8-bit games? Or... No, 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 no. They're all independent games. Independent game developers can come to us and we'll host their games. So it's, yeah, it's their own games. They're, they're not our games. We don't make games. We're just a platform for people to host their games on. All right. And we, we want to try and pull in 95% of gamers, which are traditional gamers in the Web2 space. So we want to give them a seamless onboarding experience and eliminate any sort of blockchain related obstacles for them. Nice. That's the way. Yep. And I like it. I see also uh, there's a pretty 
nice roadmap of what you already have completed. I really appreciate that yeah. you're doing going with the KYC and the full audit. Yeah. That all looks all good. I like it that you're giving like a go live, go live function on your platform. That's going to be cool. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Pretty awesome. And Lovely. nice video awesome. as well. No, thank you very much for having us, Martin. For sure, for sure. Uh, okay, so uh, we have. Uh, I'm not sure if Harry has shown up in the meantime. Um, if Harry's not showing up, then we have some time left at the end of the session for open discussion. But uh, before that, uh, I am happy to invite Jun as a speaker, introducing uh, his project Smart Wallet EVM. Jun, thanks a lot, Martin. Yeah, thanks a lot, Martin, and uh, the Panello team for hosting these. Uh, my name is June. I'm the founder of Bitcash and EOS Wallet and P2P OnRamp. That's live in beta right now. Uh, also, uh, as part of a Pomelo grant in the past, we're, we, we're working on Dboard, a DAO decision-making and community management tool. It uh, should be out um, in early July, July 4th, hopefully. Uh, so, yeah, I've been in crypto, Bitcoin since mid-2012. I've been involved in BitShares, Steam, Steam at Hive. And of course, uh, EOS. And after our experience building an EOS native wallet, I realized it's really important for our community to expand and grow within the broader crypto community, uh, as well as to showcase the great uh, EOS technology that we have. And and so it was great that we just recently got the EOS uh, EVM launched. And so now with the EOS EVM, one of the fastest uh, that's out there, uh, we can uh, do exactly that and expand out to the the broader crypto community and create a multi-chain wallet for uh, some of the largest crypto communities out there. So uh, we know all the main problems with centralized exchanges. You don't if you don't have your keys, it's not your coins. Uh, but in the decentralized world, it's uh, especially on Ethereum and EVM. Crypto users face uh, a, a fragmented user experience. They have to have multiple keys. They have to switch networks for uh, even yeah, participating in any of their, the different e ecosystems. And so this uh, complexity uh, hampers uh, broader adoption. And um, so with a unified key system, as well as uh, what uh, what is called account abstraction, that's been one of the hottest things in Ethereum. We can create a a, uh, a smart contract wallet that uh, just uses one key and uh, be able to not only interact with EOS but many of the other EVM chains that exist out there, uh, whether it's Matic or Avalanche or whatever it is. Uh, we um, uh, are able to do that uh, with this smart wallet infrastructure. Uh, so account abstraction, for those that don't know, is just separates access control uh, from just being your private public key to now being able to use the uh, flexibility of smart contracts. And Ethereum really didn't have that. Uh, you know, EOS has it natively, but we could we could do a lot of the things we can natively do on EOS now with uh, EVM and uh, on Ethereum tech technology. So I think it's great as you could do multi-sig account recovery based on your account name uh, and many of the programmatic features you can you can implement in a smart contract wallet. So subscription payments, you could do with withdrawal limits for security uh, and many, many uh, other features you can add. So uh, if you want to help us expand to the wider crypto universe with a multi-chain wallet with just one private key uh, be great to get your support uh, we are uh, on the in the EVM pool and it's called smart wallet a smart wallet EVM so you just go to pomelo.io forward slash grants forward slash smart wallet uh, and that's that's pretty much the smart wallet project that we're working on uh, Martin, I, we do have another project. It's called uh, Smart Sale EVM. Uh, I don't know if you got uh, got a Go notice for it. that. Go okay. for Cool, cool. So, <laughs> okay, cool. So yeah, so so Smart Sale um, uh, EVM 
is another one in the EVM pool. And it just uh, enables all of us to raise money via token sale- sales incredibly easily and fairly using a process called the Dutch auction. So again, it's multi-chain, so we could raise money from many of the other crypto communities, not only EOS. Uh, um, so I think it, it just expands our reach. And Gnosis, the Gnosis auction smart contract is battle-tested. It's uh, People have used it for tens, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars using this. And it's it's the Dutch auction, you can look more into it, but really it uh, enables us to get fair price discovery. If you, if you set a token price for a sale, Sometimes you get uh, oversubscribed, sometimes it's undersubscribed, but with this method, you have a single price, everyone bids what they want, they know exactly what they're bidding, and you just take all the bidders and find one price that matches the available token pool that is being sold, and and you just have one price for everybody. So it's a really fair system. Uh, The smart contracts exist, it's the Gnosis organization that built it on EVM. So we're just going to port it over and we're going to build a custom UI. And depending on how much funding we get, we can improve on the existing smart contracts. So that's called smart sale. So smart wallet and smart sale are both in the EVM pool and really appreciate your support. Sounds smart. Great. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Love it. Um, Any questions quickly from the audience for uh, Jun? Doesn't look like it, but I'm pretty happy. I just like looked at all the grants and we have a whole ecosystem here. We have culture, we have wallets, we have an explorer, we have community news, we have gaming. So that's pretty cool. I like it. I like it. Lots of diversity on this panel right here uh, and on Pomelo for this season. So um, good job. Uh, keep on building, I would say. Uh, wish everybody luck in this season once again. Um, and uh, unfortunately, Harry couldn't join us. So, you know, five minutes are left out in the open. Uh, you can do whatever you want right now. My job is done here. <laughs> I guess, um, yeah, anybody uh, wants to share some experience that you have with Pomelo at the moment? How do you guys like multipool? What I really enjoy is like having all these people, not just like different projects, but also coming from different ecosystems and talking about uh, what's going on in their ecosystem, building tools that benefit every uh, every chain that's uh, in the ecosystem, the envelope ecosystem. Uh, for example, the block explorer is something uh, in that direction. Uh, Perry with community news, bringing all of this information together. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, and Pomelo is now poised to support you all. Um, Yeah, (laughs) thanks for the applause. Um, And uh, yeah, one thing uh, before we close off the show, unless somebody interrupts me right now, um, make sure to tune in to the EOS Community Fireside Chat next Wednesday. Uh, It's happening on the EOS Community Discord at 19 UTC every Wednesday, but next Wednesday, we have a special edition rapid fire pitch session going on with every project only having 30 seconds. Um, There's no sign up needed, uh, but there are plenty of potential donors in the audience. Uh, Usually it's a lot of fun. It's uh, hosted by Stéphane Bisson that uh, most of us know and uh, here, uh, I see a hand raised. Daniel. Yeah, I have a question to you, Martin. Because uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you are um, uh, handling this uh, Pomelo pitch for uh, it's your season six, right? Come again? It's your season six to uh, operate this uh, pitch session, right? Yes, yes, I do. So, so you have uh, came through so many grants. So, uh, in your experience. Uh, do you have any idea which grant has uh, uh, done very well? <laughs> <laughs> you mean, you mean, uh, I mean which grant in, 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 uh, yeah. has performed well yeah, over performed time and well, delivered yeah, on yeah, their yeah, promises? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, since I'm on the Pomelo team, I wouldn't really um, share this opinion. I would like to, to refer to EOS Audit, who do a more 
uh, it's kind of a third party to Pomelo. Okay. And uh, on Pomelo, we don't necessarily want to pick sides or point somebody out. Okay. Uh, no, um, no. I mean, not pick the side. I mean, your your favorite. <laughs> oh. Uh, no, I don't want to pick favorites here live <laughs> on the air. This is not fair to anybody else. Okay. Um, okay. I also keep the, the pitch session collection that I'm having fairly neutral. Come on stage. You get a donation and you get featured there. Uh, but yeah, you can see um, which other grants I uh, donated or how much I donate there. Okay, and that would be looking at what I like or what I want to support as a private person. Okay, thank you. And thank you for answering. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the question. Yeah. And another question is there from Eight Bit Arcade. Hello, um, mine. Uh, you know the pitch sessions with the Korean group, and I think yes. there's one other somewhere. Do, do you know like when they're running them? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, the Korean pitch sessions, I think uh, one was uh, yesterday, and uh, the next ones will be all on Friday, if I'm not mistaken. The Chinese ones are 13 UTC on Fridays. 13, or 14 UTC. 13 UTC. 12 UTC. 12 UTC. Okay, lovely. Thank uh, you. If you signed up there, the teams, uh, the teams will be in touch with you. Yeah. And um, yeah, let me know, ping me if uh, you're waiting on an email and I can ping them to get in touch. Well, I haven't heard back from them yet, but I did show interest while I emailed them. So uh, I'll just wait and see if they reply. Yeah, I will ping them right now and make sure that you get an email. Thank you. Thank you kindly. Awesome. All right. So I think that's the full hour. Next regular pitch session here on Twitter Spaces will be next week, same time, same spot. And uh, once again, thanks to all the amazing builders and the donors in the audience and uh, listening here and participating in Pomelo, all 256 of them. Um, and uh, love to get more traction on these pitch sessions. So share them with your communities. Um, and uh, yeah. Till Thank you, Martin. Week. Much love. Okay. Thank you, Martin. I've got, a, I've got one quick, I've got one quick question. Is is this going to be available on YouTube? Yes. As well. uh -huh. It's on the new Pomelo YouTube. It's at Pomelo Grants on YouTube. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks to you, sir. Awesome. Thank you again, uh, Martin, and thanks everyone for your pitches. It was great. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Have a great week. And check out the Pomelo picnic, the the public goods picnic on the Culture Block Twitter. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye bye.